All right, we're ready for the Asset TV mid-year outlook. Kicking it off first is Jeffrey Snyder, Vice President and Senior Consultant at Kamak Retirement Group. Uh, look, let me just begin with this. Here we are at mid-year. The S&P has returned something like 10% uh, when you include dividends. So uh, give me your macro picture first. I think we're, we're very bullish as a firm on the outlook. We know there's been a lot of market volatility. Um, and so we, we want to take that long-term thought process about how we're viewing the, the market. So uh, we're advising our clients um, to kind of keep that long-term approach as well. And, and really, as we're working with clients to develop communications and education materials for participants, it's to remind participants that they're going to see a lot of volatility, potentially, and, that, and to kind of look, take that long-term view. Okay, but you are bullish for the second half, even after pretty strong returns in the first half? I, th I think so. I think so. I think that you know, there's a lot of people on the other side of that equation, but I think we're going to take the contrarian view that, you know, things are going to continue to move in a positive direction. Uh, we're, we're looking at Washington, D.C. And, and kind of looking at what's happening with health care and potentially with tax reform. Those are good signs. Okay. Uh, uh, potentially. People, people are watching right now, investment managers, and they're thinking about their clients yeah. and saying, oh, my gosh, you know, do we really have to start looking beyond pensions? Are pensions reliable? We just had a huge corporation recently say we're freezing pensions for newer employees. Is the old concept of pensions going by the wayside? Well, I think when you look at Illinois recently, there's some possibility of declaring bankruptcy, which would be the first state to do that. We're days That's away a, from I, knowing, correct? It, absolutely. Uh, you look at Puerto Rico. So some of these public pensions have really been a challenge to manage their liabilities or through the roof. And that's unfortunate because the pension system is a really, in general, is a really good system. It's dependable. People can look and see what amount of money they're going to get on a monthly basis, and we like that. But what's really happening is because of this unsustainability, there's a movement afoot to move into a more 401k style um, structure. And so when you look at what happened in Pennsylvania and Michigan, both voted to approve 401k style investments for public employees. Mm -hmm. And that has a neg potentially a negative impact if you're a police and firefighter or a government worker and you're looking at um, what, what are my benefits, yeah. now you're, you look and feel almost like a corporate uh, employer. And so that's a, that's a choice, right? But, do, but don't we have to evolve before we break in half? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, isn't oh, the PBOC also overwhelmed and uh, stressed? Absolutely. The, the, Does it have any the, money left? No, I think that the PBGC... Oh, is PBGC, uh, sorry. PBOC, PBGC, okay. um, they're raising premiums. And so there are many um, corporate pension plans that have gone into default. Not many, but there are some that have gone default. They're on the books of, the, of this entity, this quasi-governmental entity. And it's, it's, it's really challenging the system. And so when we're trying to manage our country's finances and the state and local government finances, it's about practicality. And we've got to get everyone there. But there are challenges with doing that, Liz. There are negotiations with collective bargaining groups, and it's about comfortability. And I think we're at the point where people are having conversations um, within their local governments and their governments to figure out the best path forward. I think we're, we're kind of mm -hmm. at that point. Uh, let me get to investments. People look at cheap oil, which we have right now, yeah. Uh, sometimes as a positive, certainly yeah. for the consumer, Absolutely. because that translates to cheaper gasoline, sometimes as a negative. How do you view oil and commodities overall? Yeah, I think um, they're definitely a necessary part of any person's portfolio. I think I look at things from the participant perspective. We look at things from the participant perspective. So lower oil is helpful, especially during these summer months when people are traveling and uh, out doing their, you know, schlepping their kids to yeah. uh, uh, soccer practice or whatever the, the sport is. Um, you know, I think when you're planning and building a portfolio, retirement portfolio, commodities are part of that. Uh, maybe you reduce allocations slightly. Uh, but we have seen, you know, target day funds, we've talked about this on the show before, target day funds are very popular. And we've seen target day fund managers add commodities as an allocation. So I don't think that's going away. If anything, maybe a slight reduction in the allocation. Okay. Uh, and it, what is your favorite area right now for investment? Oh, I think, you know, we're looking um, at, uh, uh, you know, domestic U.S. equities, but also international. I think that's still, there's still areas of opportunity there. Great to see you. Good to see you as Again, well. It's <laughs> Jeffrey, it's becoming a thing. You're, I, like, a, you're like a third co-anchor here. Uh, uh, let's not go that far. <laughs> Liz, great to see you. Jeffrey Snyder of Kamak. It's wonderful to see you. Pleasure. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. Good luck.